The anime starts by showing us some demi-humans working for a cruel human who whips them to hurry up because to him they're just trash in this world. On the other hand, a young ugly man named Banaza is the opposite. He comes to thank the demi-humans for their work and gives them some money. But a group of humans starts looking at him badly. To prevent trouble, one of the demi-humans tells Banaza he can't accept it. But Banaza insists because he wants the good workers to have something to eat. When Quinn appears, he convinces the demi-humans to take a break and eat, making them very happy. This puts a couple of other humans against him. Anyway, the young man just wants everyone to get along in this world, but his assistant knows it's not easy to change everyone's opinion. While talking, the young man starts glowing for some reason, and by the time Quinn realizes it, the boy is gone. The main reason for this is that he was part of an occasion from another world where they were trying to find a perfect hero. This is when we meet Claro, the summoner from the Magical Kingdom, who quickly asks the boy to undergo some tests on his statistics. Banaza insists he's just a merchant and doesn't know why he was summoned. The summoner explains that according to their ancient traditions, they summon potential heroes from other worlds to help them fight the Dark King. When a maid comes with a magic sphere, she asks him to put his hand on it to see his best attributes. When the test ends, we see that all his attributes are too low. The assistant starts to worry because anyone in that world can get those statistics. Many in the headquarters start to panic because they wasted a spell on someone completely useless. This hurts the protector's heart a little, but someone with practically maximum statistics has appeared nearby, being the true legendary hero. And as soon as he saw our main character with his low stats, he wasted no time mocking him, quickly becoming the center of attention. Meanwhile, our poor protagonist was completely ignored because the king had now found a perfect candidate who would save them from doom. As the sun set in that magical kingdom, our protagonist was just coming to terms with being in a whole new world and all he wanted was to go back home. But the next day, the royal guards forced him onto a cart, which was not the most comfortable way to travel. This was all due to a conversation from the past where the king himself had informed him that they couldn't send him back to his world because the transportation gate had been completely closed. However, they hadn't left him without responsibility, and at least they had given him special permission to live peacefully outside the kingdom. At the beginning of the journey, our guy tried to get some information from the person driving the cart, but they had orders not to speak to him. Still, our protagonist tried to get as much information as possible, and in the end, the person driving confirmed that he wasn't a slave of the kingdom. If there really was a world where demi-humans were slaves of humans, it must be a horrible one, concluding the conversation with the young man, who simply gave up and began to remember what his old world was like, maybe life in this new one wouldn't be so bad after all. When they finally arrived at their destination, the half-human handed him some money in a bottomless bag since the kingdom was practically responsible for him. But before leaving, the half-human wanted to give him a piece of advice. If you don't want to die, leave this place, as the soldiers of the Dark King tend to lurk around the area. This advice might not be of much use to him now. Shortly after, he encountered a group of slimes that nearly defeated him, although he managed to overcome them, having to sacrifice his sword in the process because it was too weak. But at least we see that he reached level 2, where all his statistics were marked with a strange symbol. He also gained a second card where, with the new level, he acquired spells to use with a bunch of windows. In one of them, it showed that he had activated the tracking and location ability, making it very easy for monsters to track him. Considering that the sword they gave him broke after just three hits, the boy understood that they wanted to get rid of him quickly. So, he finished removing the curse from his bottomless bag, and consequently knew he had to find a safe place to protect himself. Even the system was warning him about this forest because nearby there were substances emitted by demons, and simply touching them could end his life. This made the young man realize that they really wanted to get rid of him since they had told him that the area was very habitable. That's why his system wanted to make a deal where, for a third of his magic, it would cleanse the entire area. When the boy accepted the deal, we saw an incredible light that covered the entire forest as it was completely cursed. After the spell ended, the system began to show him that he had leveled up not just once, twice or three times, but multiple times, practically overloading the system. In the same kingdom, we see the princess scolding her father because what he did to that young man was too cruel, practically kidnapping someone and condemning them to a certain death. But just then, one of the king's messengers approached with an urgent message. They had confirmed that someone had just used purification, the highest level sacred magic. So, the king quickly assumed it was his chosen golden knight, expecting nothing less from him. However, the messenger had bad news for his majesty. The magic they had confirmed came from the north, where they had just sent that poor boy to die. But for some reason, he had reached level 367 with just one spell. 
So, the young man simply started thinking about turning off the level notifications as they made no sense, and that strange symbol was still there, confusing him. This didn't make him forget that the deal for purification was a third of his magic. When he tried to see the magic barrier and noticed it quickly filling up again, the young man became even more confused. He didn't know if the forest had really been purified since it had been very easy for him. But regardless, he couldn't return to the city. So, his system recommended a change in appearance to be more comfortable. When he accepted, the first transformation was a bit odd, he ended up changing his entire body into that of a woman. But this wasn't what he wanted, so the next transformation turned out to be the best. Now, he looked different and could enter and leave the kingdom whenever he wanted. His system even offered him instant teleportation. Although the boy couldn't believe he had these abilities, he decided to test them. He easily teleported to the kingdom. This made him think, if he could teleport, why not try to return to his old world? When he tried to teleport back however, it simply didn't work. This didn't upset the young man much since it was expected. So, he accepted his new life and wanted to find some work to earn money and buy things. He decided to go to the central market where he aimed to find an adventurer's guild. When he arrived at the nearest one, a young woman explained that the higher their level in the institution, the greater the rewards. This made him realize that it worked practically like any other institution. When he registered, the young woman asked for his name. He knew he couldn't use the one the king had heard, so he used the name Philo, which was his pet's name. Once registered, all his information was on a pendant, and now he just had to choose the best rewards since he had a lot of work being at the lowest level of the academy. While doing so, he saw a young woman asking for an escort to the forest. However, because they didn't have much money, the adventurers simply didn't want to go, considering the risk too high for such a small reward. Still, the young woman pleaded for someone to escort her as her family lived there. However, the adventurers didn't want to waste any more time and simply ignored her. But Fleo didn't. He's a good person, so he said it would be easy for him despite the money, as he had been in that forest and could use teleportation. These words surprised everyone around since that spell was very rare. Just then, a young knight appeared and asked Fleo to stay away from the girl. She introduced herself as Balirosa, a member of the Royal Knights, and demanded an explanation. The group suspected Fleo might have ill intentions since teleportation was an advanced spell, so they wanted answers immediately. They even suspected him liking children's, leaving Fleo in a tough spot. He insisted he wasn't suspicious and had no problem escorting her too. Once outside the institution, he intended to use his spell, but Balirosa warned him that if he did anything strange, he'd pay for it with his head. With no other choice, Fleo used his spell, surprising the girls as they found themselves in the forest. He hadn't lied, and they were really there. One of the young mages approached him, asking if he was a high-level mage, but Fleo explained he was new to this world and didn't quite know what he was doing. The girls apologized to him, realizing he was sincere and genuinely wanted to help the lost girl. The forest was completely different from what she remembered, and Fleo wanted to tell her he was responsible, but the system warned him it was dangerous to inform a demon caused by purification. This confused Fleo, but Balirosa asked him to step back, seeing he seemed like a good person who didn't deserve to be hurt. The focus shifted to the little girl as the girls prepared to attack her. The guild had informed them about a suspicious girl seeking help to travel through the forest, a clear indicator of a trap, which turned out to be true when the girl started changing her voice and transforming into a giant white wolf. However, the demon introduced herself as Fenris, the sister of Fingadi of the Four Infernals. She claimed they would pay for ruining her plans, but since her brother had asked for food, they would at least serve some purpose. She quickly used her malicious spell, which weakened any nearby beings, but it had no effect on Fleo. The wolf wanted to finish them off quickly, but the brave boy wouldn't allow it, using his teleportation spell to send the four girls back to the capital. However, for some reason, he decided to stay, confusing the demon, who asked if he wanted to become her meal. But something inside Fleo urged him to do the right thing, so he wanted to defeat the demon once and for all, asking his system to activate all his spells to start the great battle. Bringing the episode to an end, 